the Taiwan crisis. And it is something that, if it were to explode, will have massive effects around the world. Hello, everyone. This is Gamer1745 here. And I'm going to take a look at what is going on with Taiwan. It is a um, critical uh, element to the functioning of the world right now and um, has uh, massive um, effects if this were to explode. But before we get into that, this is, game, like I said, Gamer1745. Um, if you're new here, please, I uh, hope I'm earning your subscription and hitting you that like button. And if you have any questions about China, Taiwan, whatnot, I am not an expert, but we're going to take a look at some of the stuff and sort of do a bit of a strategic slash historical analysis of it. So I hope you post your questions, comments below. Love hearing about or hearing from you. So, right. China, or the People's Republic of China, and the Republic of China have both claimed um, to be uh, the lawful, rightful governments of China. The Republic of China on Taiwan has been in recent years moving away from the idea that they are the Republic of China and becoming just Taiwan. This is a problem for China who, um, for various reasons, and it's not just communist reasons, but for cultural reasons. Chinese people have a stick up their ass, okay? They are... Um, they are sure that they are the greatest people, not on this planet, really, because they're the middle kingdom. They're the kingdom, you know, above them is heaven and below them is earth. So they're in the middle between, between heaven and earth. They're the middle kingdom. They're, they, they are, um, you know, racist doesn't even cover it. They, they, they think that they're on another world um, from the rest of us barbarians out here around them. And um, this goes, you know, way, way back. Um, I'm sure that, I don't know how, how the Chinese dealt with the Mongol conquest in, in that viewpoint, but um, they are, um, but the Gadsden flag is a hate symbol and terrorist flag. Yeah, that's what some people want to make it out. And that was an American flag, so is that America is hateful? Yeah, I think I think yeah, a lot of people think America is a terrorist and a hateful nation. So I, I guess, yeah, um, if you look at it that way. So, and so China does not like the idea of um, a breakaway state. Taiwan was moving closer and closer to the idea of reunification because China was looking like, yeah, they're authoritarian, but maybe we should just get together. But with the, particularly with what's going on in Hong Kong, that um, the Taiwanese people, and I think they're in another election season now, but... Um, the Taiwanese people decided to go hard towards independence. And this is causing a problem for President Xi of China. And President Xi, the, the, from everything that I've read and everything that, and unlike what this guy, Gordon Chang, who, who is actually a fairly good analysis, but... If you look at, you know, he writes books, The Coming Collapse of China and whatnot. I think that's actually one of the titles of his book. He's been wrong, wrong, wrong. China, the Communist Party of China is nowhere near collapse. Now, President Xi may be, because there's him and um, Frogman, um, uh, uh, Mm, um, the other guy, with, I mean, with the weird, weird glasses, he's still around. He's still kicking around. Um, sorry. Um, 
there's two major factions within the the CCP, and they're at odds with each other. And it's it's a power game, and they different members of different factions get arrested often um, for um, corruption. Um, corruption is a nice generic charge that you don't have to have a solid basis for. Just blame, call somebody corrupt, and you get to arrest them. And we see whether it's um, the coronavirus, the current um, financial based somewhat on real estate um, problems in economics in China now. President Z needs a, or she, or however you pronounce his, his name, needs a win in his column. And I think coming up very shortly, there's a new leadership conference that is happening within the CCP. And she needs to look strong and good and like the continued future leader. So he would like to have a win with um just saw Tim Pool. Oh oh the oh Tim Pool. Yes, well Tim Pool talks about all kinds of things. Um so um into all of this, Nancy Pelosi schedules a trip and then reschedules it a bit, but ends up having, that's the Speaker of the U.S. House, a uh, trip to Taiwan. And this really, really upsets China. And China does everything it can. And I mean that. It does everything it can to stop her visit to Taiwan. And that fails. And as I posted and did a, um, a YouTube short on it, it shows the weakness of China. Not that China is a super weak nation. It just shows that they were not able to, um, let me maybe embiggen this a bit more so you guys can see it a bit better. Um, it shows that they were not able to change the behavior of the United States as in not having her on official state visit. So the Speaker of the House, not the, the President, but the basically third in line of succession, because it's the President, it's then the Vice President, and then the Speaker of the House is how it goes. Um, so the third leading political figure in America, they couldn't stop her visit. And since then, there's been two other congressional. First one was a Democratic convention, convention uh, Congressional Democratic Convention, uh, uh, sorry, Democratic Congressional Delegation to Taiwan, and the second, the second congressional group was, I believe, a Republican-based delegation to Taiwan. Um, all of those flown in on American military jets, um, or transports, I should say. I think they were jets, but transports uh, flown in for official visits with. Um, the president of Taiwan. And I do want to see uh, what Arno is saying. Yes, the U.S. is sending anti-shipping anti-air. Yes, I will get to some of that. Um, the Chinese are not pleased. Yes. Um, could escalate to the point of war breaks out and the U.S. Yeah, that's, where, that's what we're talking about, Arno, is that this could um, break out into a major war. It really could. And I was very concerned that um, Ukraine could spiral out to a major war. Well, I am no longer concerned that Ukraine will spiral out into a major war so long as nothing is changing there, as in what it, uh, how it's being um, fought out by the different participant, uh, external participants. Meaning, so long as, shall we call it NATO or the Western powers, are only sending um, munitions, logistical support, weapons of those types into uh, Ukraine, Putin is not going to start, and they just sent in a new um, submarine into the Mediterranean, another one, and it's playing playing hide and go seek with with NATO navies in the, the Ukraine. But I don't think that submarine is going to um, sink any, you know, launch any torpedoes or missiles at a NATO ship. Um, I don't think the Western powers are going to drop depth charges or you know. Um, it's really uh, ASROC missiles or whatever fired at the submarine 
Um, I don't think anything like that's going to happen. I just think they're going to be playing, you know, underwater tag. Like, oh, hey, we spot you, and submarine goes away, and it comes back again, and oh, we spot, you know, and you know, how close can we sneak up on you? That kind of thing. Um, we see that going on in the Mediterranean. So long as it's that, I don't think it's going to, and so long as Russia doesn't, like, nuke Kiev or some other city, um, I don't see... The Ukraine war spiraling outside of its current theater of operations. So, um, yeah, I think that is contained. This is not contained. So, I don't think. Okay. China has plans to invade Taiwan. China is planning on, not just has plans. I, I, I say that because the U.S., at least during, and I presume it still does, has a version of it, um, but during the interwar period, had a plan for war with Britain. Not that they thought it was likely, it was some planners. Well, what happens if we have a war with Britain? What are we going to do? Kind of thing. Yeah, but it's more than that. China is planning on invading Taiwan. I truly, firmly believe that. Now, I'm not saying China is, has a date set for the invasion, that it's going to happen at any particular time, but it is planning on invading. And I'll tell you when it's going to invade. I know I just said, not the date. I don't have a date. It is going to invade as soon as it thinks it can physically and the international repercussions um, won't be too bad, okay? So whenever that time and place happens, like I don't know, and we can see in attacking Taiwan by sea, here um, a nice little analysis of what it understands of the zones and where it would be coming in. So once it has enough landing ships, enough submarines, enough um, you know aircraft and all of that stuff once it thinks it has enough material to do it and then it looks around at the world and goes can we get away with it can we get away with it can we get away with it and when that answer is yes i think they're going to invade now so this might not happen for 20 or 30 years because maybe and as we're seeing now see um Basically, uh, Gazprom has announced, I think within the last 24 hours, that it is shutting down all um, because of a leak. I'm sure there's a leak in it, in the pipeline, all um, stuff coming through um, Nord Stream 1. So boom, guys, they cut you off. Trump was right. You can There's a video around that they're posting around when Trump was at the UN and saying, man, Russia's going to cut you off and literally cutting to the German delegation laughing at Trump. Ha ha ha. Hi, Germans. Hey, Germans out there. Have, nice, have a nice time freezing this winter. Um, and make sure you still shut down your last three nuclear power plants. Um, the, yeah, and I'm not sorry. Uh, you know, I, there's going to be um, people freezing this winter. Old people, young people, whatever. They're going to freeze this winter in Europe, in Western Europe. Yeah, for the individual, I'm sorry, but sorry, I'm not sorry for any of your countries out there. I know my friend Eric is having um, very, very high energy costs in Norway. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm sorry for you as a person, but for Norway, not sorry. You've made your, you've made your decisions. To, to be dependent um, uh, or selling off your electricity power or whatever the individual cases may be, you didn't listen. Yes, I know Trump has a potty mouth and he, he insults people. I want you to, anybody either live or um, later on, please give me one bad particular action government type action not trump said this no what one bad thing did trump actually do i'm not saying there are zero bad things that trump did I'm not saying that but tell me show me how what's like the worst thing trump's government did um you know uh that he ordered he had to please please you know you know please please post that live now or or later on again you know 
you know, Trump, Trump lies. Yeah, his hands are the biggest hands that were ever in the history of mankind. And he has the biggest audience of anybody in the history of mankind that's ever had. And he'll say that probably again today. But um, does that matter? There was an interview, Bean Slam is saying, there was an interview with the Chinese ambassador to Denmark, and he repeatedly told the aim of China was to get Taiwan back by all means necessary, inclusive of military. He said this is in plain language. Yes, no, they, they say this. Now, of course, the nationalist Chinese, going back to Chiang Kai-shek, would say the exact opposite in that their plan eventually is, of course, to get all of China back once the communist regime collapses. Yes, they are um, effectively at war with each other. Um, and so this is not in any way me stating something radical or something that, you know, Taiwan no longer, the government no longer in rhetoric talks about taking back over China. I'm sure if tomorrow if somehow the CCP were to collapse and there was nothing but chaos that they wouldn't accept overall rule and try to reestablish it, but eh, that ain't going to happen, and they're not trying to make it happen. So, nice graphic here. Now, the Kinmen Islands, which are right here, and then there's some other islands up here, are actually, like this island here is actually part of Taiwan territory, and there's a few of these other things. So, um, here, you know, from these rectangular boxes that are named, is where the amphibious staging zones are, the build-up rendezvous out at sea, and then, of course, potential invasion beaches, Taipei up here in the, the top. Okay, so that's setting the picture. I know it's a lot setting the picture. Um, there, you know, we don't get enough coverage here in America, in my opinion, of crisis around the world. Um, there's a... Um, Civil war would be an overstatement, but because there has been a long-term civil war, but it's over. But there is a um, UNITA versus MPLA uh, conflict over the very recent elections um, ongoing right now in Angola that my friend in Angola has been posting about and I've been following. There's also the Tigray civil war going on in um, uh, Ethiopia, where there's well over 100,000 casualties. So there's wars going on around the world that are not well covered. Um, but this, unlike those two, can spiral out of um, control. Because, like I said earlier, China tried to stop Nancy Pelosi from visiting Taiwan. It utterly failed. Now, it did, um, and we'll get to some of this here, it did uh, do military exercises around Taiwan, disrupting air travel, disrupting um, ships. Not that they couldn't continue those two things. I do believe, and maybe still going on, um, all direct flights between, because there had been um, flights between Taiwan and China and Taiwan and um, uh, Hong Kong. I believe those have all stopped and are, have not resumed. I'm not sure on the resumption, but had stopped. But other flights around had to be um, radically redirected um, to less efficient directions to get fly from Taiwan to, say, the Philippines or to Japan or to wherever um, because of these exercises. And There is no, because both sides claim a lot of stuff, because again, there are controlled territories right along the um, coast of China. There is no consensus as to where the sea border is with Taiwan and China, and especially as China is claiming all of it, of course. Um, but out over here is, um, right along about here, is the edge of Japan's economic zone, in which there's like a little island out there that they control that nobody lives on, but that is at least claimed by um, Japan. So some of the missiles and some of the exercise zone fell within Japanese economic zones or Japanese sea territory um, for economic done. Now... This has brought these actions, in my opinion, have, have 
externally at least, maybe internally it's helped Xi out, but externally has had the opposite effect. Because I presume the effect wasn't intended. How do we make more enemies and how do we solidify world opinion to recognize Taiwan as an independent state? Um, that is not, I presume, the goal of Chinese um, actions, but that is to some degree the effect of what is going on. And we're using Indo-Pacific News. This is basically a Twitter account. I believe it is based out of India. It has a very anti-Chinese um, viewpoint, um, a very pro-Indian viewpoint, uh, just to give you who and what I'm using. Okay, this, um, this is an anti-drone gun. China, like I say, uh, Kinmen Islands, uh, I believe is where the incident or incidents have been happening. China has flown drones, I think unarmed, I think, I, I don't want to, you know, and it's like a few miles. So it's not like, like, it's like, I don't know, two or three miles or like four or five kilometers. So it's far, but it's not too far beyond the range of civilian type drones. I think that's the type of thing. And we've seen some footage of, I've seen some footage of, as well as um, some still of, Taiwanese military people throwing rocks up into the sky, basically because they're throwing them at the camera on the drone. Um, and so they threw some rocks at one of the first drones that they noticed coming over. Uh, that was just sort of like the soldiers on the ground seeing the drone up there and they, they picked up rocks and threw it at it, you know, just like, um, so it's, um, yeah, it looks like something from Warhammer, absolutely. Um, so it wasn't a planned, um, you know, response, it was more just, I don't know whether they're privates or NCOs or officers or whatever, but people on the ground in the immediate um, uh, area responded to it. And then since then, another drone has come back and they've shot it down. So um, again, unarmored aircraft or un unmanned aircraft with Chinese that originated from the mainland of China, probably not just a couple of high school guys, could theoretically be, and China might want to at some point back off on whatever claims that, it, you know, oh, no, that was just some civilians flying it, but probably, knowing China, it was a, you know, government-sponsored flight um, over there. And so what... Um, So they sent that, um, so they shot one down. Well, since then, it has been, and this is what we're looking at, um, Taiwan moves anti-drone guns offshore due to China threat. On Friday, soldiers stationed on Kinmen Island, um, 10 kilometers, okay, from the Chinese coast. Now, they could also be launched from a boat even closer, so that's about five miles. Um, fired flares multiple times to chase away Chinese drones. So this, this is an anti-drone weapon. What I believe it does, I'm not sure, but what I believe it does is, is a, um, a jamming device in essence. Um, I don't know if it's electromagnetic pulse, it might be, but I think what it does, does is it jams the frequencies um, that would control a drone um, in that direction that you're pointing it at it. So it's focused and pointing in that direction to shut down um, the drone links to um, the control uh, element. Now, if, if it's a high-tech American drone, you know, like that we've used to bomb people around the world, hello from America, um, those drones are designed that if they lose contact with their control, or with their control they're programmed to fly home. I don't think, unless this is some sort of electromagnetic pulse that fries the, actually fries the electronics on the, um, on the drone itself, if it's just what I believe is a disruptor of its communication, if it's a high-tech drone, it would be programmed with the location to fly back to. But if it's like a lot of civilian drones that you hit a button and they come back to sort of their starting point, well, that's still in communication with uh, um, 
their their drone control element because they know where it is and they know to come back to it. So that would shut that down. This is a higher tech that you know has a global connect, connecting to global positioning elements and would fly at home um, to a to a runway um, unattached. What is yeah with the right technology? Wonder about the recoil and weight of a handful. Of them. Well, yeah, I don't know rail guns. I don't know what the recoil is because I know with every action there's an opposite reaction, but it's speeding something down a rail versus uh, an explosive reaction that's pushing in two directions at the same time. So I don't know rail gun um, recoil about. I just don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I don't know about. So, and as you can see, finger off trigger here. So he has good trigger discipline. We can see the trigger there. And the reason it, you could, well, one, you don't want to disrupt necessarily all electronical communication around you. And two, presumably pulling the trigger uses up a lot of battery power. So you want to point it, get it on target, point it, um, and disrupt the drone's connection to its um, control unit here. Now, getting to what Arno talked about um, later or, or earlier here, um, U.S. announces a $1.1 billion arms package to Taiwan. Now, this, to my understanding, people, again, I don't know all the details and I have not read the, the article, this is not the U.S. giving money to Taiwan. This is a sales package that Taiwan is actually paying for. So unlike Ukraine, these people, the, the Taiwanese are paying the $1.1 billion, not the U.S. is giving the money to then buy from the U.S. That's my understanding. Um, as, okay, so, and includes, in the, although it does, you know, 1.9, so one, yeah, okay. 355 million for Harpoon air to sea missiles, okay. Um, now the harpoon can be launched from the air, I believe. Um, so I know the Exocet can and does. Um, though the U.S., I don't think generally, and I'm not up on all of it. There's normally an air launch for the most. I'm used to the harpoons are shipboard missiles, um, so sea to sea, surface to surface missiles. Uh, but set up for C, and they're rather good, and they've been updated over the years. So even though you can go back to, the, I think, the 1970s is when they're created, their electronics package is much improved. If you look at over the versions of Harpoon, so these are probably relatively current models, maybe not the latest, but relatively current models, and 85 million um, Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. Supposedly, uh, I don't know if it's in one of these, they... They've asked for um, some HIMARS, uh, uh, high, the high mobility, i um, just trying to see if they, they mention it here. Um, no, they've asked for some HIMARS uh, missile launching systems and ATACMS um, missiles. I'm just going to see if we can, in their request. Um, you know, that's like a, the drones. We're not talking about big drones like that for what's coming over. Okay, here we are. Here we are. Um, there for the Taiwan's proposed 2023 defense budget includes 20, um, 29 HIMARS systems and 84 ATACMS um, tactical missiles. This is the HIMARS system with regular missiles, um, not the ATACMS. ATACM is one missile per launcher. It drops the request for 40 um, M109A6 Paladin um, self-propelled howitzers. Um, so they are looking the... Um, oh yeah, we can see here. This is the, this is the missile package when you're, when you're... Yeah, you can see here it's one missile. It's a big missile. It has, um, as they say here, um, 300 kilometers range. Uh, I don't know if it has multiple warheads on it once it gets there, um, but these are a big um, big package. So instead of six of these, it's one of these on it. This would be very good to hit ships, to hit um, uh, 
air bases in China and similar um, are all, yes, the harpoons are also air to serve. Yeah, I presume so, but I just don't specifically know of um, beam slam there. Employment in the U.S. under those conditions. Japan to boost spending on hypersonic tech and drone development. So I don't think if China had been, uh, this is dated August 30th, so very recently, I don't think um, if China had been doing all of these very aggressive actions, again, Lockheed Martin here, um, Japan would be boosting its spending on these these technologies. Uh, I think it's covered here. Again, this, this is a very good source, Indo-Pacific News, if you want to follow it on Twitter. Opinionated uh, news, but very good um, sources, it seems, in covering um, this field here. Um, we can see the, the various ranges and threats of ballistic missiles. The Japan has changed its diplomatic status or its public concern over calling for um, what was their term? Um, well, basically no military actions in the Straits of Taiwan. Basically don't invade, don't take military actions. China or we or we're going to do something about it. And um, Japan or some Japanese politicians, um, not not the you know the, the president or the prime minister pr premier of Japan, but some of the elected officials ha in Japan have now openly called for Japan's intervention if Taiwan is directly attacked, whether that means invaded or not, um, and that is a new. Big change. Hello, plastic gangster. Um, what's the ray gun that the guy um, just chatting had? And what just chatting is a because we're not playing a game today. Is a um, uh, you know, style of uh, Twitch streaming. Um, that's what they do when um, uh, Slytherin does its hold holds its tea time. It's called just chatting. Um, so everybody wants HIMARS lately, or MLRS, the older, um, and probably better assist. Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, it's the ATACMS missile that they're um, the stumbling block for Ukraine. No, um, the Japs can't have them. I expect China will go through the roof if we supply them to Taiwan. Japan has recently renounced their absolute defense policy and the Germans are, are removing it from the Constitution as well. Oh, you know it, but I didn't know you do it. Well, that's what we're doing today. We're not, we're not playing a game today. Um, so I didn't want to label it as a game session here. Uh, okay, so, um, and yes, breaking China calls U.S. to cancel deal with Taiwan countermeasure. Now, to my understanding, the U.S. has not yet agreed to give them in their package here. This is, notice this is retweeting the, the, the thing earlier. This is not, the, the U.S. has not put in its package for the harpoon or the, or, you know, they put the harpoon and the sidewinder in their package, but they've not put the HIMARS or the ATACMS system. Um, the L MLRS system I don't know is good for Taiwan in that it is, and I don't know if it already has the logistics train set up for that particular tracked vehicle. Um, so that's generally what it is where the HIMARS is on trucks, so that might be better. And I think Taiwan realizes it doesn't want to do stationary um, uh, anti-shipping or, or other strategic missiles, they want to keep them moving around so that it is harder for, um, you know, China to target them in a first strike kind of activity. Will the U.S. give them, um, did you see the guy with the railgun? Um, well, you're, you're talking about the, um, well, this, the, if you're talking about this, this is the, um, 
anti-drone gun. I don't think it's a rail gun. I think it's just a electronic beam weapon uh, of a disruption sort, is what I believe this is. I don't know how much drone vision. I don't know. Someone can look that up to see what that is and find a picture. The sales company may be telling us. Um, so I see that as that's their wishful thinking. The, the ATACMS um, is wishful thinking by Taiwan. I think they would, they're not wishful thinking. Oh, I wish we could afford them. No, I think they can pay them. I don't think they're going to give them to Ukraine either because I don't think the U.S. or other governments wants to see um, deep strikes into Russian territory with ATAC missiles because they're supplied by the U.S., and the likelihood of spiraling out of um, the theater, not maybe to nuclear war, but spiraling out of the theater uh, attacks uh, in response to that. So, um, no Hoi 3 right now, son. We're, we're um, talking about Taiwan at the moment, and we have been talking about um, uh, Ukraine earlier. So we'll be back to Hoi 3 next week. At least that's the plan. It's the ATACMS that is a stumbling block. The M2000 MLRS is armored and tracked and carries twice the number of missiles, or still, I think it's just one ATACMS if you mount that on there. So um, now politicians will tell you wheeled vehicles are blah, 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 but ask any soldier if they would rather have wheels or tracks. The answer was always be tracked. Not in South Africa's case. They preferred um, wheeled because they were operating on such a grand scale of um, Southwest Africa and Angola for a lot of their operations um, during that war. They specifically, they used some of their, um, their tanks, the you know, centurions that they had upgraded over the years, um, but they really liked the wheeled vehicles because of the long operational ranges. So, yeah, I hear you. And the MLRLS, I think, only carries one ATACM. So if you're, and, you know, again, that, that 2023 defense budget for Taiwan that they're talking about stopped its request for more um, Paladin uh, self-propelled howitzers because the Paladin, yes, you can target ships that are near to your shore, but... Ship's not terribly effective. Da I mean, yeah, 155 millimeter round hitting that ship um, is going to be significant. But if you have a bunch of ships out there, they're going to do counter battery fire very rapidly um, and probably obliterate those those howitzers pretty rap pretty effectively. And if you're just going after um, in you know landing craft as they come in on the beaches and fighting within Taiwan territories, yes, they're going to be effective, but not so much. So, um, yeah, I'll ask, ask some, oh, yeah, maybe next week. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but if you have other questions to ask, um, we can deal with that. Here, it would still not be legal in the Netherlands. You're dreaming. Okay, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, what's the ray gun? Well, it's an anti-drone gun. You can look at, I don't know, you can look up, look up, type in drones vision here, which is printed on the side of this gun. I guess, it, I, I think it's printed there and not just superimposed on the, the graphics. So that may tell you, I don't know what model or this thing. Um, I don't think the Ukraine will get ATACMS because that would give them the ability. Yeah, deep, yeah, I don't think, I don't think anybody wants to give them that. They don't want to change the equation there. The same reason they probably won't give them to Taiwan. No reason the Japanese can't have them. Yeah, um, okay, can mount two ATACMs. Very good. Um, plastic Gangster. Plastic Gangster is very well informed on some of these topics. So, yes. Um, yeah, there's no reason Japan can't have them. But... Down here is another. They, this this account posts some really good graphics. No, he's not making most of them. Sometimes he credits them. The 
Nintendo Pacific News. Yes, I know I saw it here earlier. Here, okay. Um, here we go with the um, various um, missile ranges here. 120, 120. Now, um, they do have some of the islands right along the coast. Um, here with um, Yun Fang. So you can build a missile. Building a missile for a nation like Taiwan is not hard to do. They have the industrial capabilities. Um, it's making the, the missile an effective combat weapon. It becomes difficult. So I don't know. Um, I, and we can look at China. Um, China traditionally, and I, I don't know how far they can put a missile out to the U.S., but traditionally they've had a, um, a difficulty of hitting the U.S. from their mainland. And I don't know about China's um, submarines. I do currently, if there are, they're supposedly all operational, but Taiwan has four um, uh, diesel electric submarines that are fairly old. Two of them are um, Dutch built and two of them are U.S. built. Um, so they're, they're operating um, two, two submarines, which I think submarines are very good for Taiwan's um, defensive capabilities if they can be stealthy enough. So um, I think it would be good for Taiwan and for the, the the general world here for Taiwan to have um, significant mainland striking capability, something like the ATACMs. We can see here also, like, yeah, they're planning. This is the mock-up in China. Put on some sort of China states, whatever. We can see the watermark here of this building here, which is the capital of Taiwan, the actual capital building. So yeah, I mean, it's not a, obviously an exact, but it's for military training purposes. Yeah, um, they're planning it. Um, they're doing exercises. So anyone who thinks that this is just some sort of bluff or whatever, and here, this is another Recently, a UN agency posted a map that included this as part of China. The Vietnamese government complained and the map was removed from the website and um, an updated one with this part, because it was in a little sort of, you know, box down here in the corner, the way it was done, um, claims down in the South China Sea removed. So, um, this is very concerning to all of these nations. They want to, the, the first island chain is sort of its stopping Chinese expansion here, shall we say, that if they get Taiwan, this puts all of this into the second island chain and worries. So Japan, which owns islands up to here, um, right to there, is very worried, and China is claiming some of these islands. Um, is putting very worried um, on the international, give you guys a better look at it, situation here. And so if I were the U.S., if the decision is made to give them something like the ATACMS missile, I would make sure it's a very small window between when I publicly announce that they're going to get them and sending them, meaning I would basically have all of the missiles sitting in a warehouse in the U.S. ready for air shipment to Taiwan, announced, and within 24 hours have them in Taiwan. Um, I do not think Taiwan is likely to. Let me just update to see if they've posted anything new here. Um, their pinned tweet. Okay, one hour ago, Russian Pacific Fleet and Chinese Navy ships continue. We were talking about this um, 
bull stock 2022, earlier when we were talking about um, Ukraine, uh, naval drills in the Sea of Japan, Russia and Chinese ships, including PLAN, that's um, People's Liberation Army Navy, Type 055 Destroyer 101 Nanjing carried out live fire, arti live artillery firing in the Sea of Japan. Sea of Japan doesn't necessarily mean it's in territorial waters. Oh, we'll get rid of the sound on that. Um, uh, territorial waters of Japan is just the region. Very well, maybe when what is considered. That looks very much like a Soviet ship to me. And I did mean Soviet because it's that style, but maybe that's. Well, that's pretty. That's a bit more modern. Okay. So I don't know whose ships these are that are shooting. It's obviously a Russian officer. Yeah. Okay. So and we can see that this naval exercise is going on. Indonesia getting gray zoned by China. This is two hours ago. China is subjecting Indonesia to maritime gray zone tactics in North. Mantuna Sea, so they're now pushing there as well. U.S. China shadow war descends on Taiwan. China U.S. To go, yeah. So, um, I really think looking at the map, really think looking at um, current statements. Vietnam has fought a war with um, China. Uh, what, around 1980 or so? Um, maybe a little earlier than that. It was sort of post or related to Vietnam's invasion of Cambodia to get rid of Pol Pot. China, it has, or ha had a very close relationship with Pol Pot and actually is continuing a close relationship with Cambodia. And so, and Japan, or not Japan, sorry, Vietnam kicked China's ass in that border war. Um, pretty hard. Okay, I'm on their website. Now, it's actually a projectile firing device. Okay, and it's made in Taiwan. What it does... Oh, yeah, it's not a projectile device. Yeah, it's, okay, i got to read this better. What it does is scramble all radio signals. That's what I thought, and data input or output to the target drone. Apparently, it blocks the drone transmitting video. GPS blocks drones. Okay, good. Yeah, they have always been a super or super uh, subtle, haven't they? Yeah, there is no bluff in the Chinese position. No, there, no, there isn't. Um, they absolutely intend to be reunited with the mainland. They will invade the minute. Yes, that's what I said earlier. I think before you got here, as soon as they think they can do it successfully, as well, as soon as they can physically do it successfully, as well as not have too bad of an international reaction to the invasion. When those two things are hit, and I will say this Ukraine war and the willingness of Europe to suffer the pain of Gazprom, which they've now announced shut down because of a leak, shut down Nord Stream 1 pipeline entirely, my understanding is, um, entirely shut down now. Um, because of the sanctions against Russia, the world is seeing... I mean, well, China is seeing the world is ready to put that kind of level of sanctions on China. And China, I don't think, can afford it. I think, it, I think this, I think the reaction to Taiwan has um, severely limited uh, or, or changed China's thinking towards towards the world reaction to it, um, what's happened with Ukraine. I really do. China and we can, I could pull up, I'm not going to try to, unless there's one right here in this collection of maps. Um, no, I, I have one. I'm not. Well, this, this works here. China imports a lot of oil from here. It comes through the Straits of Malaysia. China has... Um, invested a lot in African resources. Not that it entirely needs those resources. Part of it is just an economic control because some of the resources are things that they produce. China is um, in conflict with um, uh, India right now. 
I think the Philippines, under their new president, is pursuing a more pro-U.S. policy. Marcos is back in charge of the Philippines. Marcos' son, but a Marcos, is back in charge of the Philippines, won the election there. They got rid of Duarte because um, he was a crazy man, and they elected the dictator's son. Hmm, how interesting. Um, so they figured the dictator was better than the crazy man. Okay. So, um, but the Philippines are, I think, quietly um, pursuing a pro-U.S. anti-China policy. South Korea was the only major nation in that sort of immediate zone that wasn't coming out and being showing alarm for um, China's actions over Taiwan, which actually sort of surprised me, where Japan very much was, Vietnam very much was. Vietnam now thinks its bestest, bestest friend nation ever possibly could have is the United States. So, um, and the only thing that's really holding back that relationship is the U.S. is a bit concerned that the communist government that's still in charge in Vietnam, although it is allowing a certain amount of free enterprise or state enterprise or whatever you want, maybe not quite free enterprise, but a, but a certain amount of state capitalism or whatever going on. Um, uh, and it's somewhat um, not terribly great um, uh, diplomatic or, or, or no, human rights um, stuff is keeping the U.S. from embracing it closer. But yeah, um, Vietnam really, really thinks America is just the greatest right now. Um, so, uh, and that's not just in the South, that's also in the North. Um, you know, bomb them for a few years and they, they end up loving you. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and so China is really worried about its oil supply from the Middle East, somewhat worried about its supply in Africa. But if its markets, which are the rest of the world for its manufactured goods, goes away, that will collapse the Chinese economy. Not this, um, what are they calling it, tofu uh, buildings that are falling down, you know, the, buildings that weren't built to code. They do have building codes in China, it's just you can bribe the, the, the building inspectors and have them go away, cheaper than putting in good things. What is plastic? The energy crisis is what I'm making. Absolutely, as I was saying, I, don't, I feel sorry for the individual. I don't feel sorry for the peoples of Europe for, for going to freeze this, you know. When grandma, when grandma freezes, yeah, I'm not happy about that, but yeah, it's your nation. You decided to freeze grandma instead of having nuclear power plants or setting up for America natural gas. We have already reduced Russian oil imports to the EU and UK. Well, they're like supposedly shutting it down, uh, Nord Stream 1 uh, at least. And so I don't know if other imports are coming in through other means. So yeah, no, Europe is, is effed up. But since Europe is continuing to back it, I think this is telling China, or dem not telling, demonstrating to China the... Um, the willingness of the world to, you know, the U.S., we found out, I don't know about Europe, but the U.S. has imported the majority of its medicines from China, which shocks me because of the lack of quality control. And we mean, I mean from, you know, mainland China, not Taiwan. Um, so that production had shifted to China. Well, my understanding, I, there's some moves to ship some, or shift I should say, some of that medicine production back to the U.S., and I hope they do so quickly. But I don't think, and I think they were relying upon all of that kind of thing to keep the U.S. from putting on sanctions, embargoes, whatnot, on China over a Taiwan invasion. And I think the Chinese had have had to reevaluate in light of the military capacity of Russia, that maybe their actual invasion capacity isn't quite as effective as it might have been. So it might not be a four-day war of an invasion. So that this would, this would collapse the Chinese economy. Does that mean that the Communist Party goes away? Not necessarily, but it might. Or it might mean that there's a um, actual Chinese communist civil war within it. China is rearming at a rate um, not seen. So yes, they're they're. I don't know if rearming. They're just arming up. 
and a lot of it was with new equipment, so it's not so much you no know, operational. Now they, I think they have two operational character carriers, plastic gangster, or at least two big ones. Um, but they don't really have an aircraft for it if you look into it. But they have their old aircraft. But um, that they, yeah, because it's two new big ones, and. Um, they have their old aircraft for whatever, because I guess you're right, and then it's three, for whatever. They're sort of V-stall aircraft, but they have yet to be able to build a good um, aircraft that can use the sort of catapult-type system. So um, they've yet to come up with a good aircraft um, put on it. And so, well, I don't think the oil is... A critical thing for the carriers because for something like the Navy China can now during peacetime stockpile a um, you know a fuel oil for ship reserves but remember the carriers yes they need oil for the airplanes gasoline for the airplanes but their carriers I believe are nuclear powered I could be wrong on that um, now all their destroyers and other small ships they're all oil they can stockpile enough operational fuels for years to come. It's, it's funding the rest of their economy that's based the needing the oil or the gasoline or whatever. That's the real problem. It's not, it's not funding the ships, the, the oil for the ships, if they prepare for it. So yeah, um, China only has my my understanding is two 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 big carriers, super carriers or whatever. Britain has two, I think. Uh, and I don't know if you consider the French one a super carrier, not really. Probably um, the U.S. is the only nation that has more than two super carriers, and we can put I think five at any one time in operation, at least the current operational tempo. But so I, I'm worried about this. Um, what's going on? Um, and I think it's something important to, to take a look at. I, I guess that's all the real news and um, whatnot here for um, Taiwan, the Taiwan crisis, if you will. And. I wonder what the countermeasures China is going to do to the U.S. You know, I don't know what that means. And when nations say things like this, it's a bad thing to do. A bad, bad thing to do. You need to say, if X, then Y. You know, if you sell these weapons, we will do this other thing. You, you have to spell it out. Don't just say warns of countermeasures. What, somebody's going to write a, a scathing editorial in, in a, a CCP newspaper or one published in the New York Times? Or are they going to, um, you know, uh, arrest 25 Americans in, in you know, high profile Americans in China and charge them with spying? You know, what are they going to do? I don't think they're going to, it isn't like, oh, if you, you sell them the weapons, we'll nuke um, California. I don't think it's that kind of thing, but it will be a, a response, and they need to spell it out so that, you know, if you want to, if you want to modify their behavior, and of course, it needs to be something that you, that your opposition, and this is similar for the U.S. needs to do these things too. It's something that they expect. Um, look, earthquake trending in California. Yay, we like earthquakes. Um, so, yeah, um, something that you think they're going to um, carry out in, in actuality. And then that may get your um, opposite, your opponent or whatever, to change his behavior. But beyond that, I don't think it's going to actually have an effect or work. I think all militaries everywhere are rapidly reevaluating everything in light of Ukraine. Yes, I personally feel the motivation is huge issue in the poor Russian performance. That and the fact that the um, 
maintaining such large militaries on a shoestring budget, something gets lost. We support our troops in the best in the West with whatever they need, no matter what. I, as we have seen in the super expensive training professionals, um, need to be conserved in rush of the doctrine of soldiers not valued. Yeah, um, like I was saying earlier before you showed up, um, I think in the post, I think it's going to, we've sort of compared Ukraine to the Winter War. I think there's going to be a um, post-Ukraine war, and some people are saying it's already going on, and I think to an extent it is. I think we're going to see a, uh, um, something of a reformation, uh, um, reform in the Russian military post-Ukraine. Um, not that it's going to become a Western style or level of um, training and whatnot army, but it, it is going, I think we're going to see a severe um, changing in, in the next 10 or 20 years. So I think the Western politicians, not so much the military, but the Western politicians that are going to breathe a sigh of relief and that we can continue to cut budgets, um, because, hey, Russia is just a paper tiger. They're not dangerous, I think, is going to be the wrong lesson that some of them are apparently having. So, um, yeah. So I think that's going to conclude here. Um, I'll happily um, respond to any other comments or questions uh, the best I can. But I think that is my evaluation of China and Taiwan and their conflict. So again, to everyone watching later, thank you so much for making it this far. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and tell me what you think about all this. This is, we've seen recently uh, with a lot of us here, the GPU um, crisis of um, not being able to get them, as well as a car crisis that has been going on in America. Uh, there are a lot of cars and trucks that are just sitting somewhere that can't be sold because they do not have the computer chips um, that are necessary to put into them. Uh, so used car prices in America have gone up because they, you know, you can't buy a new one, so you buy a used car if you need something. So um, I, th if we were to see a conflict with um, Taiwan, oh, also another thing. Sorry, um, a. One of the new high-level um, chips that Taiwan makes, um, uh, TSMC makes, Taiwan Semiconductor, whatever, manufacturing, um, makes, have been told in the last like 48 hours or so, have been told by the US government that they cannot transfer any of those chips um, to uh, mainland China or Russia, uh, and they're obeying the US um, orders or requests on this, and China it has also made another public statement on it that this is not a good thing. So, uh, and this, these are not just standard computer chips, these are stuff that are used for AI um, operations. So, um, so advanced AI chips will no longer be able to be, some of the stuff that's coming out, be able to be transferred to China. Not that China won't be able to somehow get their hands on some of them, but you can no longer, um, shipped them over to China. And NVIDIA and some of the other stocks went down, uh, again, very recently, went down significantly because of this, because there have been massive orders to, um, to China for these chips and whatnot. So that is uh, an action. What a classic. Um, the new carriers they have are effective enough, capital ships, but um, carrier ops are most difficult, yeah. The U.S. has been doing it. Yeah, they're not quite on this. Oh, well, um, no, these were orders uh, to, um, uh, to Taiwan. Um, I don't know if India Pacific, um, Indo-Pacific News here covered it. Um, these were, no, these were um, not a request. These were orders. Um, yeah, here's the, the politician um, talking about these. I don't know if, again, if it was 
if they covered it or if I read it somewhere else. Now, these were specific orders. These weren't requests. Because of still certain U.S. technologies are involved, um, these were a hard order on them. Um, and basically kind of orders um, that, I'm just seeing if I see it here. If, uh, I don't think so now. It's, yeah, it's going too far back. It's, it's more recent. Um, these are orders that Taiwan is um, not allowed to break, and these companies, it, it's going to be a serious, serious problem if they do. Um, it's another thing that will encourage NVIDIA and companies of all sorts to get out of China and build their stuff elsewhere. Yes, well, the U.S. has already um, given or set aside a large, large sum of money to set up chip fabrications here in the United States. I know one of the other major chip fabrication, Intel's chip fabrication, one of their major, and they're doubling the plant um, currently as we speak. Uh, size is in Israel. That's one of their major chip um, functionings outside of um, Taiwan. Uh, so yeah, no, the, and like I said, these were these were um, specific State Department orders to to these companies, and basically to a point um, is that if you don't obey these orders, um, you're not going to be able to sell your chips in America. <laughs> you know, so it comes it comes down to hey, yeah, we have a big big customer of China or our super big customer of America who's also supplying our military needs. Um, who are we going to obey? You obey the U.S. So yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they, they've already been moving a lot of manufacturing out of China. If it's super cheap manufacturing, actually, they had been a lot of socks and underwear and T-shirts had been made, being made in China for years. A lot of that has moved to Bangladesh. Other slightly more high-tech stuff has been going to India and to Vietnam for about the last 10 years. And um, it's now accelerating out into the, to Vietnam and India. Um, if I was starting this sort of business at the moment, I would avoid production or supply chains that involve China simply because they're yes, absolutely, and they're and every, and everybody is is taking advantage of it and or taking yeah of the situation and doing that kind of thing, and it is not just Trump or even what an American president is looking at. Um, if there is an invasion of Taiwan, that's going to disrupt everything, and whatnot. Okay, like I was starting to wrap this up, I want to thank you all um, for watching. See you next time.